So, very welcome today. Uh, we have a great pleasure to have with us the president of European Network for Academic Integrity, Thomas Foltinek, and a dear colleague, uh, also a member of ENAI, Shivada Siva Subramaniam. So we have two topics for you today. The first one is ENAI recommendations on the ethical use of artificial intelligence. And the second topic is European Conference on Ethics and Integrity in Academia in 2023 that Shiva is organizing in Derby. Uh, so yes, very welcome. So academic integrity and artificial intelligence. Very hot topic. So what do you have for us? Uh, hello, everyone. What I have for you is a presentation of the NI recommendation. So let me share my screen. And even though uh, you didn't have an opportunity to uh, read this recommendation or uh, come across with it because it was not published yet, it's going to be published soon. So let me present uh, how or why, how, uh, why and how we prepared or uh, this kind of document and uh, what is in uh, what is in it. Um, so first of all, let, let me remind you of the purpose of NI. NI, uh, European Network for Academic Integrity, is an association uh, which aims to support higher education institutions to work together in the field of academic integrity. And uh, as uh, everybody uh, noticed uh, recently in media or at your institutions, uh, uh, artificial intelligence is becoming a topic that is being discussed at the universities worldwide. So we also want to support not only our member institutions, but all higher education institutions uh, to tackle uh, this topic and address, uh, address this, uh, this issue. Yeah, so we are, uh, by, by providing the recommendations, we are following uh, our objective, uh, which is provide resources, promote collaboration, share best practices, uh, and uh, also, uh, also collaborate in research that is related to various topics of, uh, of academic integrity. Uh, for those who don't know uh, many details about NI activities, uh, uh, the, the most important activities that NI, uh, NI does are annual conferences, summer schools, uh, other training events, uh, and monthly webinars like this one. We are circulating newsletter every two months. We are quite active on social media and we have a web page with a lot of resources, namely educational materials, uh, glossary guidelines, self-evaluation tools. Most of the NI activities are organized within our working groups. So currently we have around 15 working groups that are dedicated to particular uh, topics. And these working groups uh, played significant role uh, in designing uh, this, uh, this recommendation. So as I already said, uh, probably everybody have noticed that uh, various tools that employ uh, artificial intelligence on, of different types and on different level are being released into the public domain. They mostly make our life uh, lives easier. I believe that all of us are using uh, machine translation or grammar checkers like Grammarly. All these tools use artificial intelligence and uh, all, all these tools uh, pertain both uh, opportunities and challenges to education. I don't want to uh, talk much about uh, particular challenges and opportunities. Uh, I will just refer to Thomas Lancaster's webinar, an I webinar that he conducted in September 2022, and it was dedicated particularly to artificial intelligence and academic integrity. Since that time, there were significant improvements, namely in generative AI tools. So these are this is a particular subset of artificial intelligence tools that can generate the content for you. For example, and this, this guy writing a student essay is not a picture of mine, it's not a photo. It's an image that was generated by Midjourney. I just told this tool that I 
want a picture of artificial intelligence writing student essay in blue and yellow colors and i got this uh this robot writing an essay so uh and it's it's of course not only uh, not only about uh, images but what uh, creates the most concerns are the texts so at the uh, beginning of uh, of this year, at the beginning of 2023, uh, we established an ad hoc working group within NI. Here you can see that the members of the working groups uh, that are the authors of of the recommendations. So it's uh, it's me, then it's Sonia from Sweden, Irene from the UK, Zinat from uh, from United Arab Emirates, Rita from Portugal. Peggy uh, from European Students Union in Belgium and Julius uh, from Slovakia. We met several times, so the, the process looked like uh, like this. We, we had the first meeting in in January where we drafted the li list of ideas. It was the first brainstorming, uh, and we needed to clarify both the the, the topics that the, that we want to address, the structure of the document, and also the the overall approach of NI. Uh, so how we would like to to address artificial intelligence in uh, in education and how we would would like to address uh, our members uh, to address artificial intelligence in education and of course what kind of support we can provide to our member institutions so the result of that brainstorming was just the unstructured list of ideas or yeah, very very uh, very little structured list of ideas and we circulated this to all NI working groups and asked them uh, to provide feedback to, to this document. This happened mostly in February uh, and at the be beginning of March. So we received a lot of other uh, additional ideas from the working groups. Uh, the working group uh, dealing with, uh, with, with the glossary of terms provided the feedback for uh, to, to definitions. The working group uh, that is dealing, uh, that is addressing contract cheating, uh, came with a new definition of new term. I will talk about it uh, a bit later. Uh, the working group dealing with the technology and academic integrity provided also uh, useful feedback for us. So after collecting uh, this uh, this feedback. We dealt with with wording and we drafted the the text and prepared the clean document. Uh, this document is is ready now, but we haven't published it uh, yet. We send it for publication to International Journal for Educational Integrity, and it's currently accepted as editorial and should be published soon. I believe that next week or or the following week uh, it will be out. So we will we will share this document uh, via the NI social media, and uh, we we can we can send it also to the people who registered for this webinar. As I can I presume you are uh, you are interested in in this topic. But let me now explain what is in in the document and how. Uh, and I see the potential and the challenges that are related to uh, artificial intelligence in education. Uh, <clears throat> first part of the document is uh, like uh, presenting some basic uh, basic facts, basic uh, acknowledgements of, of, of the of the current situations, and of course the, the very first thing are our definitions. So for the definition of academic integrity. Uh, we used the NI definition, uh, so academic integrity is defined by NI as a compliance with ethical and professional uh, principles, standard practices and consistent system of values that serves as guidance for making decisions and taking actions in education, research and scholarship. Then there was a discussion about how to define artificial intelligence. Uh, in the end, we we sticked to the European Union official definition, uh, according to which artificial intelligence refers to systems that appear to have intelligent behavior by analyzing their environment and taking actions with some degree of autonomy to achieve specific goals. 
if you ask mid journey how uh, how to paint uh, artificial intelligence you get something like this uh, fun fact i asked veraos uh, image generating tools to to give me a picture of artificial intelligence what i'm constantly getting are pictures of women so if you have any doubts of what gender artificial intelligence is it's women um then there are several other other claims that uh, provides the the framework uh, background and and context for our recommendations so the ai based tools that uh, have particular uh, impact on education are those who can uh, are those which can be used to transform produce or generate any kind of content most people are mostly aware of ChatGPT, which is here to produce text, but it is not only about text, it's also about images, other, uh, other categories of art, music, or programming code. Uh, then we thought it is important to acknowledge that it is increasingly challenging or even impossible to reliably distinguish AI-generated content from uh, human-produced content and uh, also, uh, we wanted to acknowledge that device accessibility of artificial intelligence exacerbate existing uh, types of academic integrity threats, namely essay mills, paper mills, fabrication and falsification of data, and so on. In this point, I would like to emphasize that we don't think that artificial intelligence is bringing any new threat, I mean, something new in principle. It is just making current threats more visible and more severe because artificial intelligence multiplies the abilities of those who want to commit misconduct and uh, these tools are more accessible. But all the problems like plagiarism, paper mills, data fabrication, data falsification and so on have existed in academia before. Yeah, so artificial intelligence doesn't bring any new threat, it just uh, uh, exacerbates what is what existed here before. Uh, as artificial intelligence are penetrating into more and more areas of uh, human activity, uh, we think that uh, not 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 uh, that students uh, teachers uh, everyone will be constantly using ai tools in in their profession uh, and it's it's okay it's it's fine uh, using ai tools it's it's uh, does not mean does not automatically mean misconduct so we want to acknowledge that authorized and declared usage of ai tools is usually generally acceptable uh, but in some context, it may fit the definition of academic misconduct. In this point, we looked at the definition of academic, uh, of uh, yeah, NI definition of academic misconduct in the NI glossary, where the misconduct is defined as any action or attempted action that undermines academic integrity and may result in an unfair academic advantage or disadvantage for any member of the academic community or wider society. When you look at this definition, it may not be really clear whether unauthorized or undeclared use of AI actually fits this this definition even though if we, we think it does some people for, for some people it might not be clear so here thanks to the uh, effort of the working group uh, addressing contract cheating we are coming up with the uh, with a new definition of new term that uh, for, in our opinion, better describes the risk that is related to unauthorized uh, content generation, generation using artificial intelligence. So the, the new term that we suggest, uh, unauthorized content generation is defined as a production of academic work in whole or part for academic credit progression or award whether or not a payment or other favor is involved using unapproved or undeclared human or technological assistance. 
So this definition encompasses both contract cheating, uh, ghostwriting that we have been uh, addressing a long time ago, and also unauthorized or undeclared assistance of artificial intelligence that produces the academic work for you. So all these, uh, all, bo both of these, uh, both of these uh, Mm, types of misconduct have uh, have now umbrella term unauthorized content uh, generation. So in in this point, uh, we also wanted to emphasize what I already mentioned that artificial intelligence is multiplier of users ability and it multiplies both good abilities and bad abilities so both students teachers or basically anyone can use artificial intelligence to good purposes to uh, enhance student learning and to make it more efficient and to achieve uh, desired learning outcomes or to make shortcuts and uh, uh, and commit misconduct uh i believe that you have heard about the about the tools that are able to to generate for example software code so it's uh, th this kind of tools multiplies the abilities of the programmer and it's both in good and bad way you can use it to generate the program code for for a program that will be useful for a useful application that creates the benefits for the society or you can produce it to uh, you can use it to to produce a virus or uh, or some malware yeah from the point of the technology from the technological po uh, point of view it's the same issue but then it depends on the user in which way he or she uses the technology and the same uh, the same situation is with uh, AI in education. It can be used in both in good way and in bad way. Uh, and um, at the universities, we can't say that artificial intelligence is, is something that we uh, that we don't address at all and pretend it doesn't exist. Uh, AI is penetrating all areas of human activity, so all university graduates should be prepared for using AI in their future, uh, future jobs. So the tools, relevant AI tools, uh, should be embedded in the, in the curricula. And students are already aware of these tools. We can't prevent them uh, from using them, so we, we should... Uh, we should uh, address this issue. We should tell them what is allowed and what is uh, what is not. Among the working group that developed these uh, recommendations, we had discussion about what should be what should be acknowledged, uh, not only not only in relation to the technology, but uh, but in general. When you have the, the either the student work or or a scientific paper, so what what kind of other people or other other sources input should be should be acknowledged, um, and we want so so we we tried to come up with a formulation of a pretty clear, clear criterion, uh, and the the wording that we agreed on is that all person sources and tools that influence ideas or generate the content should be properly acknowledged. Uh, consequently, whenever the AI tool is used to produce the content, it should be acknowledged somehow. Yeah? The specific form of acknowledgement may differ. It will be different for a student essay. It will be different for a, for a thesis, different for, uh, for scientific paper, different for presentation. If it is possible, also the prompt should be provided, but uh, this is uh, complicated in most uh, most situations or even impossible in most situations. Uh, appropriate use of services, sources and tools that doesn't uh, that don't influence the content but only influence the the form is generally acceptable even without acknowledgement. Uh, this means that proofreading. Uh, proofreading by people or proofreading by by tools 
spell checking using te using thesaurus and so on uh, does not influence the content significantly and does not have to be uh, acknowledged. Another topic that we deal with is uh, responsibility. Uh, anybody who played with ChatGPT already realized that the output that uh, this language model provides, uh, provides uh, can be inaccurate, biased, or incorrect, but the tool presents it very confidently like given facts. So users should be aware of the limitations of these tools and also of the fact that neither the AI, AI tool nor the provider of the AI tool take responsibility for the generated content. Yeah, so it's uh, just the content that the tool gives to you and then how you use it is your responsibility. So human user is always responsible for what is done with the, with the output of uh, artificial intelligence. Consequently, AI tool cannot be listed as a co-author of any kind of publication. You can also see the guidelines for authorship of uh, committee, committee for Publication Ethics. There are four criteria of authorship, and uh, one of them is that uh, all authors have to approve the content of the publication. And the, uh, the last one is that all authors have to uh, take responsibility for the publication. AI tool never uh, takes responsibility and can never approve the content, which means that can never be listed as co-author. But of course, when the human authors use AI tools in whatever way, they should acknowledge using of, uh, of AI tools, as I uh, talked uh, about it before. So here is the future university education with artificial intelligence, uh, according to Midjourney. And what will the future look like? So. In terms of students, students should be included in, uh, in the conversations about artificial intelligence uh, at every institution and should be also educated on, uh, on how to develop their skills with AI. For every task that students are given with artificial intelligence, it is more and more important to, uh, to explain the students the purpose of the activity. Yeah, so the students have to understand that the purpose of the task is not to submit an essay, submit a document, yeah, do not focus on the result, but focus on the process. The purpose of the task, the purpose of the assignment is to gain some uh, learning outcomes uh, and this requires some process and they have to go through this process. Just asking artificial intelligence to generate the, re the, the result does not lead to, uh, to desired learning outcomes and is not the purpose of the assignment. And most students, well, we still believe that most students that are at university want to learn something. So even by explaining the purpose of the task, it creates the in intrinsic motivations for, uh, for students to, uh, to complete the assignment or complete the task with integrity. And uh, in general, uh, or my personal opinion is that in most of the cases, students should be allowed to use AI in a, in a constructive way. But I know that some people, some, some of my colleagues have different opinion for that. So this is something that should be clearly stated for each particular assignment. It should be stated what kind of tools are allowed and what, uh, what are not. Teachers will have to uh, change uh, ways of assessment. They will have to change uh, how they are, uh, uh, how, uh, what tasks are used for, uh, for assessment. So uh, teachers should receive training on ethical use of AI, uh, including the development of relevant learning outcomes and uh, assessment, uh, assessment strategies. 
And this, of course, doesn't ha happen uh, just overnight. It requires uh, requires long term activity, and it requ requires some oversight, both at institutional level and at national level. We believe that uh, in each country they, there should be national guidance providing an overarching advice on what institutions should include in their policies. Uh, what NI sees as particularly important and uh, crucial to be included in that policies. So they should define rules on uh, allowed use of artificial intelligence. Of course, there should be space for specific rules on course level. In some contexts, in some settings, it is perfectly okay if teachers uh, prohibit all types of technology. Whereas in other courses, it might be okay to use any type of technology. And there is a scale. Uh, yeah, so whatever, uh, a lot of courses will be somewhere in between. So the teachers or course coordinators should be given the freedom to, uh, to set clear rules in their courses. But in case they don't do that, or in, in cases that are above the course level, like thesis submission and so on, there should be default rules uh, on the institutional level, what is allowed and what is not. And in, in uh, the cases that are allowed, how to acknowledge uh, usage of, uh, of AI tools. Just having the policy, of course, is not enough. The policy and the rules should be clearly communicated to teachers, students, administrators, basically to all stakeholders at that institutions. Uh, and also institutional policies should guide users uh, on how to correctly and transparently acknowledge the use of uh, AI tools in different types of outputs. Yeah, so the enrichment might be different in assignment, in dissertation, in, in paper, in book, and so on. So this should be specified in, uh, in the policies. So these are the, the general recommendations that uh, NI, uh, NI is giving. And the, at the end of the document, we have a summary statement that there is no doubt that artificial intelligence brings significant change to education. And as with any other technology, it extends and enhances human abilities and may be used both in positive and negative way. And NI urges uh, national policymakers, institutions, and all individual members of academic community to seek ways on the ethical use of AI and share, share best practices in order to benefit from the opportunities that AI brings to education and science. And we want to play an active role in support of sharing best practices. So what are, what are the next steps? Uh, first step, of course, is get the recommendations published. And we presume it will be a living uh, document. So we want to collect, uh, collect the feedback from uh, from anyone anyone is welcome to provide us with feedback to 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 the recommendation and there will be a special session dedicated to this recommendation at the european conference of uh, ethics and integrity in academia in derby uh, so after the discussion we may we may refine the, the content of the recommendation and publish second version let's see but what we certainly want to do is sharing good practice on how the how the tools are used at different institutions and there will be of course development of educational materials uh, of course many institutions already do develop their educational materials so we invite them to let us know so that we can uh, in case the, their materials are publicly available, we can include them in the uh, NI database. So that's uh, all from my side for now. Uh, and before we go to the next topic, that is uh, that is uh, the conference, uh, I believe that we have some time for questions. Thank you for your attention. So thank you, Tomasz, so much. Uh, there was one question uh, that I believe you already answered. 
in Q&A, are there any recommendations on how to cite AI-generated text? And um, I think you, you talked about it in your presentation after that. Uh, I, I talked about the, the necessity of having the, the policy that will advise the, the, the members of academic community on how to uh, how to cite AI generated text. Uh, we don't have anything like that specifically in in, in the recommendations yet. The, this is the the first document that uh, NI uh, is going to publish on on this topic, so it's on kind of general level. Uh, but of course, we we will have to adapt the general guidelines for academic integrity, uh, and th there will have to be some, some some more specific guidelines. Yeah, but we, we don't have anything like that uh, that yet. But as I said, uh, artificial intelligence does not bring new uh, anything new in principle. Yeah, it just uh, makes current challenges uh, much stronger. So acknowledgement of whatever whatever content you take is pretty similar to acknowledgement of what you have the, I don't know, discussion with colleagues or personal communication or, or something like that. So if you don't know how to, how to cite uh, the output of AI, you may already refer to existing guidelines and just select the case that is more, most similar to, to, to your, your case. There is a follow-up questions in the chat. What do you think of MLA and APA citation recommendations for AI? Are they appropriate or not? Uh, I am sorry, but I haven't uh, haven't seen uh, these specific re recommendations for, for AI, so I'm not able to answer the question, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then... Yes, we okay. have. Okay. They can provide links. <laughs> thank you. So thank you. I th I think that these recommendations are more on the uh, on the level that's a bit higher than than uh, um, than citing. It's about more about whether we should use or forbid AI or what do you say? Uh, Oh, I can I can see now that the example of uh, of how to cite ChatGPT. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> how I would do it. Uh, or maybe maybe I would I would provide uh, more details. Okay, so th this is this is the reference and, and the list of references, and then then we have uh, this kind of in-text citations. Uh, so as th this is the language model that, that provides the longer text, so it should be it, it should not be copy paste it to, to your work. It always requires some, some comments uh, around that. So that, that's the good space to put the prompt and to specify, uh, specify the communication that, uh, that was there. Yeah. So in my opinion, this is, a, this is an appropriate way how to, how to cite it. Uh, and I would not uh, do it uh, differently. Uh, um, ML, yeah, you can see in the chat, Emily asks to include the prompt also. Um, including the prompt is uh, is difficult yeah? because um, if it is just if it is just that you put the prompt and get the result, then you you can or you should. Uh, put the prompt. Yeah, these were the cases of the images that I, I used to decorate my presentation. It was quite simple prompt, and it was okay for me to copy that prompt and and put it to the slide to acknowledge uh, acknowledge mid journey. Uh, but whenever there is longer conversation and more uh, and wider context, which is the case of ChatGPT, it takes into account all the previous conversation that you had and all, all the previous versions of the document. And you may ask cor for corrections, improvements, and so on. And in this case, the previously generated content, in fact, becomes the part of the prompt. And it's not possible to, uh, to, to include it uh, in, uh, yet, yet to put whole prompt in, in, your, uh, in your work. So it, 
can either be provided as a supplement uh, material, as, as appendix, if it makes sense, or you, you should just describe yeah, what was the initial request and then you iterate it to uh, iterate your, your request to, uh, to get this, uh, this uh, kind of, uh, of output. And there was also a question about uh, about uh, prohibiting or uh, or supporting these tools or, or promoting these tools. I am optimistic in in this uh, uh, in this aspect, uh, and also I am a member of the working group of Masaryk University that recently published the, the position, and our university is very positive about that. We 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 acknowledge that we can't prevent students from using that. Uh, we know that it is uh, probably impossible to detect uh, AI-generated content, and even if it was possible to detect, it is impossible to prove it. So we encourage uh, students and educators to uh, to use it, to be creative, and to seek the positive ways of uh, how to how to use AI positively. We have a comment here that perplexity AI does generate URL that returns the original answer, and that does seem constant. However, not all AI is doing it, so it's very hard to, to have this level. I personally think that it's good to have to, to, to save screenshots in order to prove what happened, basically, if you use it. So I always recommend it. Then we can see if uh, someone asks, you will have the background of your mm -hmm. research and how you use it, yeah. basically. Yeah, be, being as transparent as, as possible and like following good practice of any scientist, they're taking proper records of all the steps that are leading to, to the output. This refers to, to using of AI as well. We have another question in the Q&A. Do you have any examples in mind the benefits of using AI in teaching and learning? Mm. Well, the benefit for me, uh, I, I subscribed to, to Midjourney and I use it a lot to, to create images that make my, my presentations more lively. So <laughs> that's the benefit for, for me as a teacher, certainly. And it was a nice topic for student assignments in my course, Ethics and IT. I asked my students to explore the, the ways how ChatGPT or similar tools can be used to solve tasks in the course uh, according to their selection. And now I'm reading uh, what, what they came up with. And it's it's really interesting. In, in some courses, ChatGPT would, would pass, yeah, would, would get, I don't know, 80 Eighty percent of points, where, uh, whereas in other course uh, it's it's more more difficult. And sometimes they have interesting ideas on how to uh, how to use ChatGPT constructively. But it dif differs uh, course from course, of course. Yeah, I told my students in language classes that they can use it to produce text in order to train uh, their language skill. So I see quite a lot of new for for. Uh, LT, L2 learning, that it's quite many things we can do actually. And you have beautiful graphics. You got the compliment <laughs> on that. Okay, thank you so much, Tomas. So, AI is one of the topics that are going to be discussed uh, on the next ENI conference, European Conference on Ethics and Integrity in Academia. So, Shiva Siva Subramaniam, welcome. Uh, with your presentations. You're hosting this conference. It's going to be at Derby University. So tell us more. And if you have any more questions uh, to Tomas or Shiva, you can post them in the chat. So hopefully we will have a few minutes at the end uh, if you come up to something. First of all, hopefully you can see the uh, presentation. Yes, we now. can. Yeah. So yeah, just um, just uh, welcoming you to the University of Derby for the ninth European Conference on Ethics and Integrity in Acad Acad Academia, uh, ECEIA 2023. Just to give some um, additional information, uh, in addition to the website we are having, 
Uh, first of all, I need to uh, explain a little bit about the registration process is the fact that we got two websites. Uh, one is for paying the uh, paying for the conference registration. The other one is the, the conference page about the uh, page about the topics and everything. Uh, so the conference page will give you uh, up to date information about the conferences and the topics and the changes in in any if any in in the uh, venues or, or topics. Uh, but the registration website, there's another uh, link. The reason behind that is that th this is the first uh, European conference uh, from e uh, ENI, which is uh, happening in the UK. And because of the currency changes, uh, it would be easier to handle uh, two different websites. So that is to start with the explanation why we are having two different uh, websites, especially for the registration. Uh, yes, this is going to be hosted uh, in the University of Derby uh, within the School of Human Sciences. Um, we have already uh, booked the rooms and the uh, lecture theaters for you. Um, and uh, the, just to let you know, the deadline for early birth registration uh, is on the 15th, which is tomorrow. However, we know that uh, some of you are still waiting for the reviewers uh, comments and those of you who have submitted your original submission on uh, on or before 22nd of um, March uh, we will look into you keep your early bed registration because it's not your fault that you submitted on time but the review reviewing process is getting delayed so you can still be able to register yourself uh, with the early bird uh, registration uh, fees. Uh, so the conference will host uh, invited speaker uh, keynotes, uh, expert panel discussion, and another thing, you know, the AI uh, related or open AI related text and the uh, uh, figure generation and we can discuss about it. We have invited the, the sponsors. The sponsors are mostly people who are working in the text uh, matching software, developing text matching software. So we will have a discussion panel with them. We will ask the question. Uh, we challenge them uh, to provide an improved version uh, to at least um, uh, with a 50 to 80 percent accuracy to uh, point out the AI generated uh, text. And also we can also uh, discuss about the questions we discussed here, especially I was in uh, I was keeping quiet because I will get a chance to, now to talk. Uh, we talked about the um, how to uh, cite the AI generated text, uh, but I just wanted to show my point of view is that in Thomas's uh, presentation, he actually pointed out that the responsibility, the responsibility, the AI doesn't take, take any responsibility. So I'm just putting my comments here so that we can discuss that in the conference as well, that if the AI is not going to take responsibility, whether it is prudent for us to cite the AI generated text. And that again, we can use it for our advantage to make the students and the academics understand that the AI doesn't take, uh, take responsibility. So whatever they are doing from the AI need to be checked by themselves because I, as authors, they are responsible for that. So there are some disadvantages about ethically citing the, the 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 AI generated test, but also we can make it as an advantage to teach the students and the academics how to use it or how to take the responsibility of a AI generated text by checking it. So that is a learning process. We can discuss that as well. Uh, and the as far as the online participants are concerned, um, they will be uh, allowed or they will be able to attend all the keynote speeches. Uh, panel discussion, and we have a separate section for online presentation. They can present it there as well. And also when we talk about 
the conference, the conference is an opportunity to learn, share, and collectively discuss. So even if you are not presenting anything, you are all welcome to view your point of view, discuss with that. It is more or less an academic community helping each other, using this opportunity to meet up in a derby, and we can discuss that further in, in different uh, areas of AI generation or AI, how to use AI generated text and also the traditional problem we have been facing with the, the plagiarism, avoiding plagiarism. And one of the good, uh, th good thing I learned from this uh, uh, hosting this conference that there are so many uh, presentations that are based on school level research. And that is something that, you know, ENI as an organization, we are focused about the future generation. So we are always think and research about how to em em enhance the uh, academic integrity related work from the school level. So I'm really pleased to let you know that around two or three, or actually more, probably more, because the last time I checked this on a three, three or four uh, submissions are about school level uh, uh, contributions as well. So the topics are mainly current topics, in, including AI uh, research in, in the area of research ethics and the academic integrity. Uh, uh, initiating the academic integrity in the school. That's what I am really proud because th there are so many school from all, uh, uh, school related research are being submitted where they are highlighting students as leaders in academic integrity. And also we will discuss about the ethics and integrity in post uh, COVID era bridging the academic integrity with research ethics. These are the traditional research areas of ENI and also the others. Uh, and the new threats, new threats, how to change the challenge and the threats into opportunities. And one of the which we have already discussed with uh, Thomas now, um, academic integrity and text matching software and the teacher training as well. These are the, the sub theme or sub topics there of the conference. And again, I, I uh, re-emphasize the importance that it is not the fact that you need to present, a, if, you, if you are interested in the academic uh, integrity or, or research ethics, you are always welcome to attend, to discuss and critically analyze the current situations. So as far as submissions are concerned, um, I am really proud that there are over around 146 initial submissions uh, from uh, six different continents. They are they are actually named here, uh, and 95 of them so far until 10th of, 10th of April this week. 95 of them are fully accept, expect, accepted. There will be three keynote speech, each one each for the um, day, and three panel discussion. Uh, so far, with the based on the abstract uh, submitted abstract or accepted abstract, there will be 83 presentation, eight workshop, four posters or infographic, infographic, and also as of uh, 10th of uh, April, there are 50 people have already registered. And again, uh, we urge you urge others to register as soon as possible. Um, and these are our sponsors, uh, and again, sponsors will be involved in that discussion, especially around the AI. Um, there are two academic sponsors, um, apart from ENI, is uh, uh, Ethinet and the University of Derby. Uh, there will be social activities. Uh, I, I include included the ENI annual general meeting as a social activity because we are a professional network, so that is uh, going to happen in the 12th of July, 2023. Uh, that will be followed by welcome reception. And the next day, we will have a trip to Kittleson Road, probably in the morning. Uh, and then we will have the gala dinner on the same day. And there will be closing ceremony on the 14th of July as well. 
And this is just a glimpse of uh, Kettleston Hall, uh, where you can spend, uh, probably we will have a picnic over there as well. Uh, we are, these are early stage, we are still organizing things. And as for the travel guide and the nearest uh, uh, airports are given there, the very nearest one is the uh, East Midland airports and uh, most of the uh, European destination uh, will have uh, flights from uh, uh, to the airport. It's around 20 minutes from Derby. There will be uh, Skylink buses for every 20 minutes as well. And some of the international non-Europe flight might come to uh, Birmingham airport. Again, you need to catch a train from there. Uh, it's, it's, uh, train, frequent trains are from Birmingham to Derby, probably every half an hour from um, 6 a.m. to 10, 10.30 uh, a.m. As for Heathrow, uh, the best um, way is uh, either by train or coach, but I would advise, personally advise to take a coach because there's a direct coach available uh, at certain time points uh, throughout the day uh, from Heathrow direct to Derby as well. And uh, the example travel plan with links to book uh, either National Express coach or British Rail will be available on the website. Uh, the website link is given there as well. Uh, as far as the accommodation is concerned, these are the uh, conference organizers uh, recommendation. Um, so Leonardo Hotel, Stuart Hotel and the Travel Lodge. And please note the Travel Lodge is slightly far away, although cheap, slightly far away from the conference venue. And we have arranged the um, shuttle bus from Leonardo Hotel to and from the uh, conferences at conference time, uh, which will be uh, updated soon. And uh, I think there's only a very short walk from the Stewart Hotel to Leonardo Hotel, if you want to catch the conference shuttle bus as well. Uh, as for travel lodge, you need to take a bus to uh, railway station and then go to the Leonardo Hotel for the shuttle bus. And those of you who are planning to stay back, again, Derby is, is a picturesque uh, area. Uh, there are so many uh, mountainous area, peak districts are there for you to explore. And those information will be available with your uh, conference back when you come over here. So we look forward to entertain you in the University of Derby. And if you have any questions regarding uh, conference, you can email, the email address is there, or you can post the um, questions here. I will try to answer as much as I can. The reason I'm saying I try to answer is the fact that we are still uh, finalizing things. So some of the questions I may not be asked, answer, able to answer straight away, but we will uh, be in touch. Uh, for that said, um, I will stop sharing my conference yeah presentation if you have any questions i am happy to answer it can we get a ride on your motorcycle yeah sure. <laughs> that's my question of course yes <laughs> you promised yeah. us when we when yeah we july is uh, is a uh, uh, middle of summer so i think we will have uh, at least around 10 to 11 hours uh sun we hope <laughs> Uh, but we never, we never predict British weather. You can yeah. predict British, but not British weather. We are looking forward to it. Uh, can you repeat who are the keynotes for this year, this year's conference? Oh, I need to ch check myself. Uh, uh, this is a conference web page anyway. So uh, if you visit the conference web page, and uh, what we do is we we did three keynotes. Uh, I think two from uh, Euro Europe and one from uh, UK and two panels, uh, or we call it expert panels from UK so, and also Europe as well. So if you went, if you go to conference, the more detail conference website, you can see more detail as well. And the main thing I wanted to emphasize is that never mind whether you are presenting or not, but if you are interested in to talk about, discuss about 
and attend these uh, uh, conference, uh, please. You are all welcome. Okay, I'm going to share my screen and show who yeah, sure. uh, keynotes are. Uh, so you have as keynotes, Professor Shari Kwit, yeah. uh, President of the National University of Kiev Mohola Academy in Ukraine. Uh, Professor Michael Draper, uh, Dr. Mary Davis. And then we have uh, discussion panel members. Uh, panel one on ethics, integrity, and current integrity projects with Professor Julia Priest Buchheit, Professor Mariette van den Hoven, and Dr. Anna Albakina, as well as Lisa Dippendale. Uh, and as the conference is in the UK, we will have Dr. Irene Glendinning, Dr. Robert Crockett, Dr. Thomas Lancaster, Dr. Sandy Dan. Oh, it's really well known names for, for ENI and other members. Uh, and we also have some pre-conference workshops, training the training academic staff training in academic integrity workshops with Zina Khan and Rita Santos, ethical publishing and dissemination with Irene Quentining and Salim Razi, and then ethics and integrity in supervision workshop with the two of us, Shiva and me, having that one. Uh, I also would like to invite you on our next webinar that is in May 12th uh, with Philip Phil Newton from Swansea University who is always really interesting to listen. He's going to talk give us some tips and tricks for running survey-based research in academic integrity. Uh, you can register uh, on the academicintegrity.eu slash vp slash e monthly webinars as always. Uh, so please do because I think it's going to be really interesting to hear. He has to say. So, do we have any more questions for Shiva or for Tomash? Yeah, the website will be frequently updated. So, just in case, even if they miss anything, they can go to the website and see. So, thank you both so much for giving us these presentations. And thanks to all our attendees and for your uh, questions, tips link. Uh, I'm looking forward to the editorial, of course, International Journal for Education Integrity. And uh, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, sign up for the newsletter of the ENI, and of course, see you in Derby, hopefully. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.